Welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. This is another Sunday update video. I also post silent build videos on Wednesdays, so be sure to check those out as well. Today, we're going to talk about the Model T. So, if you saw my last uh, build video, you would have seen that we're making really good progress. So, in that video, we got part of the interior in. This upper section of the interior. Made the headliner, got that installed, painted the wooden frame, um, put the new vinyl roof on the car, which came out really good. Uh, several people have pointed out that uh, I should not use Phillips head screws because they weren't invented back then. And that's a good call. I probably will switch those out to some flat head screws. Um, but really, it came out very well. I'm happy with the way it came out. I also got the windshield in, in that uh, build video. Uh, since then, I've done a few little things. So we'll kind of go over that quickly, and then also I'll go over what's going to be the next uh, project on this car. So, uh, since the build video, I got the rearview mirror in. I added some seals here to the windows. There's a seal here, there's a seal on the side. I was waiting on some of these to show up. It's like I put those on after the video. Um, one thing that maybe you guys can help me out with. So, the windshield folds out and it has these little crank uh, knobs that you loosen and then you can fold the window out. Well, I only have one of these. Uh, the other one is missing. So I just have a bolt stuck in the other side and I can't find these on any of the vendors websites so they don't seem to make new ones and I haven't been able to find it on eBay. So if anyone has one of these that they're willing to sell me, please let me know because I'd like to get one uh, for that side. I just have a bolt in there at the moment. Um, but then other than that, I've been working on a few small things. I've got the headlights hooked up. You can see it. So for those of you who don't know, I didn't know. I couldn't figure out how to turn on the headlights at first. This switch, so this is the key, but this switch around the key is for the headlights. So you got dim and on, and you can see that now that the voltmeter is working as it should. But, uh, and you can kind of see the headlights are coming on there. But yeah, so I got the headlights to work. I've been trying to get these dash lights to work, but they're six volt bulbs. The whole car is six volt. Um, and these particular bulbs have two contact points on them. I haven't been able to find them, even online. So I'm still working on that. I was able to find a correct six volt bulb, I believe, for the dome light, so I've ordered that. So that should work soon. Another note on the dome light. Originally, the switch for the dome light was right over there on that, let's see, on the C pillar. Um, and when I took that switch out, it just crumbled into pieces and I couldn't find one small enough to fit back in it. And also, you can't really take that panel back off to access that switch if there's an issue with it. So I ran the wires up front and then I'm going to be using this switch here for now for the dome light. This switch was originally for the electric uh, windshield wipers. To have those, the wire was exposed, it ran out here, uh, and then there was a big box here with the electric motor. I'm not sure I'm going to put that back on because many reasons. One, it'll probably never be driven in the rain. Two, that awning sun visor thing out there blocks almost this entire section of the window that would that the wiper would affect. Um, so even if it did rain, it probably wouldn't need to be used, that wiper. And then also they have a little hand crank one, which is smaller and, and I may just put that on there if I do have one at all. But anyway, so that's the switch for that. Uh, while we're in here, I'll talk quickly about the starter. So, in my last update video, I did a cold start, and people noticed how slow it cranks. And like I mentioned, I, have, I hand crank it to prime it just because it cranks so slow. And so several people said, you know, you should replace the battery, um, or you have a bad connection. And of course, I did all of that. Uh, the battery's brand new. Every wire is brand new. All the cables that run to the starter and the battery, everything's new. All the contact points have been extremely well, well cleaned. Um, so while it's possible that it's a bad connection, it's not really likely. Uh, it could be that the starter needs to be rebuilt. I did mention that um, it didn't work at first and I cleaned it up a little bit and I got it to work. So maybe it actually still needs to be rebuilt. Or it could just be that because it's a six volt system, it's going to crank over pretty slow. I don't have any other uh, point of reference with six volt systems. I've always had 12 volt, even the 356 I'm converting to 12 volt. So um, it's very likely that it's just calm and that it's going to crank that slow because it's a six volt system. Anyway, um, 
that's what I know about that. And uh, if you guys know more than me, please let me know. Um, but yeah, so I did those things. Headlights are good. Uh, I mentioned I got the fuel shut off for the carburetor and I got this, it came in stock, or I mean, it was delivered recently. Um, it's not, the fitting isn't quite the same size for the fuel line. So now I've ordered a new fuel line and I've also ordered the sediment bowl that goes on the bottom of the tank because mine leaks a little bit. So, and I also ordered a new um, needle valve for the carburetor. So I'm basically gonna replace pretty much everything I can think of that could be causing the leaks and then also make it very easy to then turn it on and off. Cause once this is mounted here, then I'll be able to just turn the fuel on and off right here without having to crawl under the car. So that's good. And um, that'll be a nice improvement. But yeah, so that's what's going on or that's what has gone on since the last video. But now I'll talk about what's gonna be coming up in the next video. So the next step, is going to be to do the doors so i've got to clean up the doors paint them i have new channels that go here and new seals for the top so i'm going to be replacing all this the window seals i've got to clean up and make sure that the window crank mechanisms all work uh, and then we've got to make new panels and then uh, put new material on those and i'm, I'm very excited about that I'm excited to see it for myself and also for you guys to see it. The material on the lower half of the interior is not the same as the upper half. It's going to be different. So I'm looking forward to having that in the car and seeing how it all looks. But so the next video is going to be focused on the doors. Hopefully by the end of that video, they will basically look and function like new. Um, I will also in that video most likely be making the panels that go down here. Kind of these kick panels um and then also the panels that go back here and cover up where that window comes down also i have an issue with these windows these windows are really cool they slide down uh, and there's a little kind of a catch on the side there that little handle it kind of fits into grooves so you can raise it up and it goes into grooves to keep it at certain levels and then there's a spring on a lever down below it and that spring helps pull the window back up. The spring on one side broke uh, and I ordered some new springs. I found some for a small uh, trampoline, like the small workout trampolines. I bought a set of those springs and I think I'm gonna be able to make those work, but I've gotta make kind of an adapter to make it fit and make it the right length. Um, but anyway, so I've gotta get that addressed and then make that panel and get that on there. So hopefully, in the next video, the doors are done, all those panels are done, and then really the only thing left to do in the interior after that will be the seats. I do have some carpet for it. I bought what was supposedly a carpet kit. It was really mostly just floor mats, just two pieces. Uh, but I do have that, so I'll throw that in the very end. Um, but yeah, so doors next, then seats. The seats have always been my biggest concern. Um, if you watch the build video for the um, the headliner you, you saw that I, I do so I have a sewing machine and I, I, I can sew um, I'm not that good at it I have made some boat cushions and things in the past but these seats will be the most challenging thing that I've made so hopefully they come out okay um, and that's why I'm kind of putting those off to the end and who knows maybe it'll take a few tries but I did get I believe all the supplies I need I was able to track down actual cotton padding like the loose stuff like they used back in the day, which was extremely hard to find. So hopefully it's gonna come out okay, but that'll be interesting to see. So um, I'm looking forward to that. But uh, let's see, I think that's pretty much it then. Um, no starting the engine today, but I will, uh, I've got a few other things I've gotta to do to it. I've still gotta fix the oil leaks and stuff like that, but uh, you know, it's getting close. So by the time the interior is done, uh, I'll, I'll address the small little things I need to do on the engine, but then we have to go through the rear end before we can drive it. I have uh, some different brakes that I'm going to be installing for the parking brake, which can helpfully help me in an emergency uh, to actually stop the car. And so there's other stuff to do before we're driving it, but we're getting very close, making really good progress. So, all right. So that's it for this week, guys. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing.